Hello everybody and welcome back. This is Miss Karen again and hope that you are all doing well and finding some fun ways to pass the time at home. And with that in mind, I thought we'd see if we could do a few more stories today. So today I have picked some of my favorite animal stories to share with you and I hope that you will enjoy them as much as I do. But let's get started. Are you ready? Hello, I Hello, toes. Hello, mouth. Hello, nose. Hello, shirt. Hello, shoe. Hello, tummy. Hello, you. The first story I wanted to share with you today is Five Little Monkeys Jumping on the Bed by Eileen Cristolo. It was bedtime, so five little monkeys took a bath. Five little monkeys put on their pajamas. Five little monkeys brushed their teeth. Five little monkeys said goodnight to their mama. Little mama kiss. Then five little monkeys jumped on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. The mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So four little monkeys jumped on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. The mama called the doctor and the doctor said, No more monkeys jumping on the bed. So, three little monkeys jumped on the bed. One fell off and bumped her head. The mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So, two little monkeys jumped on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. The mama called the doctor and the doctor said, No more monkeys jumping on the bed. So, one little monkey jumped on the bed. She fell off and bumped her head. The mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So five little monkeys fell fast asleep. Oh, thank goodness, said the mama. Now I can go to bed. What is that mama doing? She's jumping on the bed. Mama, what do you think is going to happen to her? I think she might bump her head too. Uh-oh. So now that we did our five little monkey story, let's do our five little monkey song. Are you ready for some jumping? Here we go. Ready? Five little monkeys jumping on the bed. They all fell down and bumped their heads. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, No more monkeys jumping on the bed. So they thought, hmm, and thought, hmm, and said, Let's run instead. You ready? Here we go. Five little monkeys running on the bed. They all fell down and bumped their heads. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, No more monkeys running on the bed. So they thought, hmm, and thought, hmm, and said, Let's turn instead. Are you ready? Here we go. Five little monkeys turning on the bed. They all fell down and bumped their heads. Mama called the 
doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys turning on the bed. So they thought, hmm, and thought, hmm, and said, let's jump outside. Are you ready? Here we go. Five little monkeys jumping on the lawn. They just kept jumping on and on. Doctor told Mama there's nothing wrong. Just let those monkeys keep jumping on the lawn. Let them jump and jump and jump and all fall down. Good job. The next story I have for you is Clip Clop by Nicola Smee. And it's sort of a play along story. So if someone is there who has a laugh, go ahead and jump on and let's get ready. Who wants a ride? Asks Mr. Horse. Me please, says Cat. Up you get. Clip clop, clippity clop, clip clop, clippity clop. I want a ride too, please, Mr. Horse, says Dog. Up you get, says Mr. Horse. Clip clop, clippity clop, clip clop. What about me? I want a ride too, please, Mr. Horse, says Pig. Up you get, says Mr. Horse. Clip, clop, clippity, clop. Clip, clop, clippity, clop. Don't leave me behind, says Duck. Up you get, says Mr. Horse. Clip, clop, clippity, clop. Clip, clop, clippity, clop. Can you go a little faster, Mr. Horse? Ask Cat and Dog and Pig and Duck. Of course I can, says Mr. Horse, but make sure you hold on tight. Clip, clop, clippity, clop, clip, clop, clippity, clop. Faster, faster! Clip, clop, clippity, clop, clip, clop, clippity, clop. Faster, faster! Clip, clop, clippity, clop, clip, clop, clippity, clop. Whoa! Slow down! Stop! We're falling off! Squeal cat and dog. Mr. Horse skids to a halt, and cat and dog and pig and duck fly through the air and land in a haystack. Plop, plop, plopity, plop. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dearie me, says worried Mr. Horse. Again, cry cat and dog and pig and duck. Up you get, laughs Mr. Horse, and cat and dog and pig and duck go riding off again. Clip, clop, clippity, clop, clip, clop, clippity, clop. All right, let's get ready for our jumping and counting song. Now, you may notice that I have a fancy schmancy flannel board here. Uh, Grown-ups, all this is is a big old cardboard box that I cut a piece out of, and I zipped an old fleece jacket around and um, felt anything felt will stick to it. Okay, so let's try this. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, Eight, nine, what comes next? Ten, good job. All right, I think we are ready for our song. Now, you might remember last time I told you that Jim Gill's songs are now available for streaming on all platforms. So let's see if we can get him to come up, okay? Alexa, play Jumping and Counting by Jim Gill. Jumping and Counting by Jim Gill on Amazon Music. All right, here we go. Jump, 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 jumping high are we. But we'll stop jumping while we count to three. Jump, 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 just 
like pogo sticks. But let's stop jumping while we count to six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Jump, 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 jumping, and we wait to stop our jumping while we count to eight. I would like to share with you. It is called Truman. It is written by Jean Reedy, illustrated by Lucy Ruth Cummings, and it is being read to you with permission from Simon & Schuster. Now let me show you something fun. Sometimes if you open up a book all the way and look at the cover from behind, look what you get to see. There's all of her. And this is Truman. Truman was small, the size of a donut, a small donut, and every bit as sweet. He lived with his Sarah high above honking taxis and growling trash trucks and shrieking cars, and the number 11 bus, which traveled south. Truman never honked or growled or shrieked at anything or anybody. He was peaceful and pensive, just like his Sarah. Pensive is a fancy word for likes to think. One day, Sarah ate a big banana with her breakfast, clipped a blue bow in her hair, and buttoned up a brand new sweater. She strapped on a backpack so big, 32 small tortoises could ride along in it. But zero tortoises did. Sarah placed seven green beans in Truman's dish, two more than usual. She kissed her finger and touched it to his shell and whispered, Be brave. And then she left. Not to worry, she'd left before and she'd always return. But this time, that backpack was particularly big and Sarah looked particularly pensive. And that banana and that bow and let's not forget about those extra beans. That's when Truman saw something he'd never seen before. Sarah, boarding the number 11 bus going south. The bus roared away. Truman waited for Sarah to return. He waited and waited. He waited a thousand hours, tortoise hours that is, until he could wait no longer. He would go after his Sarah. He would catch the number 11 South, even amid the honking and the growling and the shrieking, even if it seemed impossible. Bonk! That's when he noticed the rocks. Three rocks that had always been there. Ordinary rocks that now seemed extraordinary and the arm of the couch, and the pillow propped just right, 
and that tall, tall boot, and the rug, that glorious, endless rug. Without Sarah, their home seemed vast and uncharted and unsettling. Truly unsettling. But perhaps most unsettling was that Truman could no longer see the taxis or the trash trucks or the cars or the number 11 bus. Which way was south anyway? Now the sun hung low like Truman's head and heart. Just then. Oh, can you see that? It was a flower. And then, vroom, screech, whoosh. Up floors and under doors, Truman heard it. A bus. It was time. Time to catch the number 11 south, amid the honking and the growling and the shrieking. Yet standing there in that ray of light, Truman felt peaceful and pensive and brave. But just as he was about to slip under the door, through that opening, barely the size of a small tortoise, what do you see there at the edge of the page? Sarah! She spotted him, shining like the sun. Truman, she cried. She scooped him up and said things like, oh my goodness, and you, and how did you ever, and amazing. Sarah kissed her finger and touched it to his shell and tucked him back safely in his tank where he was peaceful and pensive and proud. And later, just before bedtime, she read him a story. Do you see what the story is about? It says, Truman. Now Truman knew that one day soon, he and his Sarah might travel south to see new sights and hear new sounds and think new thoughts. Together. So now I am going to introduce a new segment of story time for our special online version. And this is an old friend of mine. Her name is Blue. Hi. And Blue is going to help us out with a new segment called Rhyme Time. It's going to be all nursery rhymes. And which one are we doing today, Blue? We are doing Hey Diddle Diddle. Ready? Here we go. Hey, diddle, diddle, the cat and the fiddle. The cow jumped over the moon. The little dog laughed to see such sport. And the dish ran away with a spoon. Now, let's try singing it. Ready? Hey, diddle, diddle, the cat and the fiddle. The cow jumped over the moon. The little dog laughed to see such sport. And the dish ran away with the spoon. Good job! Mwah! 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 See you next time! Well, thanks for spending some time with me today. That's all I have for the animal stories today. Um, but I hope that we can get together again soon. And let's say goodbye. You ready? Here we go. Stretch way up high. We are going to tickle the clouds. Now tickle your toes. Now turn around and tickle your nose. Reach down low. Reach up. Story time's over. Wave goodbye.